Hello everybody, and welcome back to Elden Ring. We are on the final grace? No, second to last grace before the big bad boss. We just got done clearing through this area with dog and man, and a bunch of bandit looking fellas. We're going to be ignoring them though, because we have a little bit of extra stuff to take care of. One of those things is going to be Coming from the site of grace that we were just at, you come out the door, turn to your right, there will be a man here, a dead man with smithing stones. And our plan is to drop on this man, right down this way, well, drop down from the man, not on the man. Which, yes, will take a little bit of damage, but it's not that bad. Now our goal is to fall onto this support beam right here. Here we are. Grab this loot. Mm. Looty loot loot. Now we... <laughs> We can try to jump onto this pillar here. The timing is a little awkward. We want to get a running start. Oh, like this. All right, we've made it across. It's going to be a handful of Batmen here. Not to be confused with Batman. Can I hit this thing with a fire pot? Let me check, huh? This angle? <laughs> yeah, we can. There's another one here, too. Might as well murk him as well. Oh, I couldn't even see because of the body of this chunky boy, but apparently we hit. Amazing. That was the- oh, there's more stuff up there. That's the only reason to cross this, so I guess this was pointless. Let's go ahead and craft those fire pots back up. I want to just maintain always having at least five of those on me. We're gonna cross this, come down to the right, drop down, following the wall, jump over here, and get some goodies. Now, there's gonna be a few rats down in this area, and they're far from a problem. Very far from a problem. You can just sword and board like you do. Very simple. It doesn't even matter if they hit, really. It only takes three hits. Yeah, see, I just took a hit like that, and, well, it barely mattered. It only takes three hits to proc the bleed and murder them because they're insanely weak. But we have this big boy here. He does a little bit more stamina damage. Just kind of came out of nowhere. Not too worried about it, though. Like usual, the second your stamina starts getting... Wait, was that a grab? No, I guess not. The second your stamina starts getting a little low, you just drop your shield and back up. Disengage from the fight till your stamina's back. That's the strategy. We have poison bloom as we continue down. Is there any other loot here? Let's look around. Taking the right path, I just see a wall. Let's use our lantern. Where is it? Lantern. Right there. Good little lantern. Now let's keep going down this path. Hey, where you going? I didn't realize that there was a scarab down here. Wait, what does this one have? Is it a smithing stone or rancor call? Huh. That's a pretty good spell if you're running a int faith mix. You uh, can't make up your mind on which kind of magic you want to use, so you just do both. That is an option. Now, if we continue down this pathway, you can see a room full of loot. Which, if you ever played any video game ever, you know that that's never actually the case. It's th There's something else going on here. So we're going to chug our flask of wondrous physic. Tasty. Take them. Vitamin supplements. And we walk into the room. Hmm, it's shaking. I wonder why. Oh! It's another one of these things. So, of course, we do the same thing we did with the last one and just stick to its right side while stabbing. Repeatedly. Only really having to pay attention when it goes up and climbs the wall. If it could stop phasing through the wall, that'd be great too. But only when it starts squirming around and climbing the wall and screaming, signifying that it's going to grab. Uh, I guess I'm on the left side. Well, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have your shield up, you're safe. Surprisingly, I think this one is less healthy than the one that we fought in the other dungeon. So, you should have a fairly easy time if you just follow the simple rules that were set in the last one, which there really aren't many. It's just keep your shield up and poke him to death. Oh, he's about to explode. Just block that. Let the flask do a bunch of healing for us. What's this? Stone sword key? I'm <laughs> just slowly picking up all the loot. Oh, I got hit. Well, that barely did any damage. Nice. That means the build is working. We don't have to think with a build like this. Oh, I think he's gonna explode again. Here he comes. Yeah. Explosions. Now we could chug some Estus if we wanted to. We'll probably wait it out. Oh, here comes some breath. Gives us free stabby time. Oh, he staggered. Neat. Let's see if we can stab him in his big, ulcerated eye. Uh-oh. Now he's gonna get mad. No, just sweep the ground. Fine. That's fine. See that? Not even one Estus used. And that's why we came down here. A golden seed. That's where we came from. 
And this is where we go. Something, something, God Nigel. Prince of Death's Pustule. I believe that basically just gives you a resistance to petrification, which is irrelevant. It's a nice little ladder here. Probably the longest ladder in the game. So we're just going to be climbing this. Forever. Good God. Time lapse. Oh, it's finally over. That was the true final boss of the game. Testing my patience more than anything. Um, uh, I believe this is a previous area of the dungeon that it leads us to. Should we stone sword this? Uh, why not? Let's use a stone sword key here and take a peek at what's inside. What's up, buddy? Stab some fellas to death. Oh, there's two of them. <laughs> Can still just continue to block without thinking. Back to stabbing. Oh no, my stamina is broken. Too bad he's too slow to do anything about it. And not all enemy- ooh. Oh, that was a good idea. Iron wet blade. We need this to apply certain ashes of war to our weapon. Or certain types. Hot crest wooden shield. Not exactly our goal. What about this? Misery gold. Oh, that's really just a big long dagger. There's a guy here to the left, right? Yeah, torch man. Let's go ahead and stab him to death. If I stab the wall with my shield up, I still bounce off of it. Understood. Uh, that's where we came from. Let's not go down there. I think we'll die from that fall. If we come back this way, grab this random item, which is somber smithing stone too. That's fine. Oh, okay. Right. This room. Coming in through here, we have a many-armed man. I think we could handle him if we wanted to. Yeah, we could. I'll even try using barricade shield. See how it goes. Wow. He's staggering because of the barricade shield. <laughs> Hold on a second. Is that a new effect I don't know about? Is that... Are you for real? Do it again? No? Come on. Stagger? Oh, crap. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't know that could happen. Just walk under him here. So yeah, he could just... <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that's the scream. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh, it just takes stamina. It doesn't go through the shield. Nice. I guess I'll just keep stabbing him to death and <laughs> with the barricade shield up. Damn, that's broken. I. That must be a new effect. When you add in the fact that it already boosts your guard boost, it doesn't show it in the stats, but it boosts your guard boost, so you take less stamina damage while blocking. Then you tack onto that the fact that things just stagger that normally wouldn't, I guess? Uh, we don't have to go over there, do we? Uh, I gotta figure out what that item is, so I guess we do. Ouch. Dude just threw poop at me or something. What's up, bro? Just gonna hit me with some Windblade stuff like we're playing Final Fantasy. Stormblade skill is really cool. You, uh, you wanna fight, bud? There we go. Somebody else is raising a shield, the only downside is this weapon will bounce off of them. Unlike a two-handed weapon, or not two-handed weapon, a big weapon. Like a big old sword. A great sword. Come up these stairs, fight this knight dude after we grab this chest. This item is essential to every playthrough. The Mimic's Veil. If you're ever going to go online, you need this item. So that you control your friends. Let's try Barricade Shield again. No? No stagger, just increased poise. There we go, there's the stagger we want. Oh, it ran out. Oh well, that's fine. Just get some stamina back, let him approach me. Well, maybe not. Got all my stamina back before he approached. Alright, this man is dead. Am I working backwards? I think I am. I don't need to be here. See dogs to the right. Yes, I am working backwards, but I've already gone this far. We're gonna jump over this wall here with the sandbags. What's this? Gold pickled foul foot. We'll probably never use that. What is this guy looking at? What are you looking at, bud? What are you, what are you locked on to? Over there, huh? You <laughs> Do you sense something? What is it, boy? Is little Timmy stuck in a well? Oh, now he sees me. <laughs> oh, man. Advanced AI. Truly advanced. Let's run up and around here. That's the room we were just in. I guess we'll just keep running around. I don't know why I even took this path. I don't need to. Ladder. What is above? Above is a roof with... Huh. What is up here? Is there anything? Come around to this side, there's no loot. And down over here, down this way is fairly irrelevant as well. So, I guess the only way to drop down is this way. Right? Let's jump over this. Anything over here? No. Okay, drop down onto this. Kill this guy. I guess we've just made our way to the other side of this hanging troll. Hooray. Let's unlock this door for no reason. Let's see what's up this way. We have a stone sword key. Looks like this was all worth it. Stab this guy to death. Casually. Pickled turtleneck in a chest. 
That's fine. Back over this way, I think it might be a good idea to jump down into this pit with the dogs. Pretty sure there's an item in here that we want. We'll chuck an Estus beforehand, just in case. Sorry, a flask of crimson tears. The name is just too long. Estus is easier. Let's drop down, jump, and stab this doggo. Ouch. Apparently my shield wasn't up. Well, this one's a little bigger than the other dog. Now, now that I got my stamina back, I can just get to stabbing this thing to death. Oh no, my shield. Ow, that actually did hurt quite a bit. It's okay though. We'll chug again. Just keep chugging. Lump of flesh. Oh, that's from the dog. Beast bones and... Chrysalid's memento. Chrysalid's memento. I don't know what that is, but cool, I guess. We're getting things and stuff. I do believe that's pretty much it for this little spot. There's a room this way with a dude doing dude things. Actually, can I craft more arrows? I'd really like to. No, I'm gonna have to go farm beast bones at some point. I could throw fire pots. They are cheap. Very cheap. Probably farm those at some point too. It's very simple. There's just a certain bonfire that has one butterfly and one mushroom. And you collect from both. Down this way, through this door, and... Oh, we know this place. That's... That's a bunch of ballista and stuff. Can I open my map? No, I just pissed everyone off. Let's run back this way and see if I can just open my map. Fast travel. Map. No? Okay. We'll try making more distance. Seems those archers have an insanely long uh, aggro range. Well, the music is gone. Let's fast travel back to the lift side chamber and not get distracted. Now that we have a golden seed, we can check at the bonfire if we can up our Estus. No, not yet. We're close, I'm sure. One or two more. Now, in preparation of getting a better shield, now that my vigor is 30, I want to get my endurance to 20. Because we need a lot of carry weight to use better shields. So for the time being, souls will go into endurance until it's at least 20. We might even hit 25, I'm not sure. There is a shield in this area, this castle fort thing, that I know... You know let's firebomb this thing. Can I hit it from this distance? No, nah, weak arm. This is probably going to be an annoying fight. Come here, burb. Me and you. Can I just stab it? No, it won't stagger. Oh, there we go. Ray for bleed Brox. You know what? Let's hit it with the crossbow. <laughs> it was about to murk me too. Grab this flight pinion. It's just for making slightly better arrows, which we will not do right now. Let's come around here to the side. Come up these stairs. We have ourselves an axe man. A dead axe man. What's this? Smithing stone too. Can never have too many. Now we have bird this way. I think we will use the crossbow for this because they're annoying. So let's do this. Just slowly loose arrows on it as it approaches. Oh, unless it just happens to shift slightly to the side. Ouch. Doesn't stagger, huh? Okay, fine. Back to the rapier. Huh. Alright, that worked. As long as you wait for it to attack before you attack, you'll be fine. It's generally how it goes. I'm going to take the Flask of Wondrous Physic just for no particular reason. If you're not fighting a boss, you might as well take it as soon as you're done with the bonfire. Or Sight of Grace. It'll never not be bonfire and Estus in my brain. As we come forward, and to the right is a cell or a room. We're going to grab, what is this? Smithing Stone? Can't have too many. Exposition, exposition. Talk to this lady. Blah, 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 blah. All right, that's probably enough. Now, if you want to, we can summon her for the boss fight that is going to be coming up very soon. But I probably won't because she just gets in the way. I don't like the big dangerous bosses having more AI problems than normal. Down over in this corner is a golden seed. Now we might be able to upgrade to nine flasks. We'll see. Now up that way is two normal enemies, the bandit boys and a giant. We'll come over here to the right, sticking to the wall, to grab these smithing stones. And let's see if we can hit this guy from here. That's a rapier. Of course we can't. What the hell? Try the crossbow. Ooh, this thing's actually got pretty good range. Hope he drops that soon. There you go, drop that guard. Yeah, good boy. He's a good stupid bandito. Hit this guy. Oh no, did that just... that made contact with the troll? Okay. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> okay, the bandit guy is just giving up. I don't want him hanging around just in case. I'm gonna come this way. Firebomb. There we go. Very easy way to quickly eliminate something. And now we're gonna stab this giant in the foot. Repeatedly. He's gonna have little tantrums and be an angry, angry boy. But it doesn't really matter. Because we can sword and board it. And our shield can just block most of this. 
you want to, you can even use the barricade shield skill to reduce the stamina from blocking things. Does it still reduce stamina? I'm not sure, actually. If so, it's not by much. Oh yeah, no, never mind. It's an alright amount, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check it out on the wiki or something. But that's a dead giant. 1.2k runes, did they give more than normal? Thought they only gave 1,000 flat. I don't have anything that boosts rune gain, so weird. Past the giant, which was right there, is a nice little room to the right. And outside of this room is a fog of war, the piss waterfall. Go ahead and rest at this just to get our FP back and our flask. Oh yeah, upgrade time. Already at nine flasks, and we haven't even fought one of the main bosses yet. Look at us go. We have a boss here. This is the summon sign for that lady we just talked to. We're not going to summon her, or at least I am not. You can if you want. I don't like it. And we're going to come across to this other room on the other side of where the race was and murder this scarab. It has an Ash of War that's interesting. I guess it's the easiest way to sum it up. And there's a couple other things in here. It's also dark, like really dark. Must be the time of day. We'll go ahead and get the lantern on. But we have some pot boys, a couple pot heads, and we are going to stab them to death. Because I believe there's a cracked, ouch, there's a cracked pot back there. I don't believe. Uh oh, we got the big boy. I guess we'll handle him first. Should be able to just sword and board him, old school style. Nothing complicated. Yeah, that spin attack is the worst thing that they have, but that's still pretty manageable. The worst it did so far is just break my guard. The only downside is these guys are pretty resistant to slash, or not slash, slash and stab. But if you have something like a hammer or a club, they take massive damage. What did he drop? Living jar shards, raw meat dumpling. The living jar shards that these guys have a chance to drop can actually be used to craft something called an iron perfume. I think it's called an iron perfume. It gives you like 80% damage reduction in everything. It's a lot. I think it's 60%, but that's on top of all your armor and such. Which is pretty intense. If you use that right, you can absolutely neutralize some bosses. Like, you don't even have to care. Just put on your biggest, hardest hitting weapon, take the iron perfume, and just start wailing on it. Blow for blow. But I don't think we can craft the iron perfume anytime soon. Over here, we have a cracked pot, and then over in the corner here, we have another cracked pot. That's what we like to see. Let's celebrate by using one. Yeah, cracked pots. Sets us at seven, I believe. Yeah, seven pots. And if we come across to this left wall, what's out here? Lift to basically nothing important. We don't need to go that way. We are going to come across from the point that we enter this cracked pot area. We're going to hug this right wall. Just running across it to get this item, which is kukri. That's neat. But the important part is coming to the end here, and you can see that lip on the wall there. We can jump onto that lip and start running across it. Yeah, and then we get here, you can see another lip right there, just barely. I decided to do this at night time, apparently, because it's very dark. And we come through this way, and what, what is down here? I don't think I usually go this way. I see a knight in two burbs. Huh, neat. Maybe mess with that another time. But if we come in here to the right, we we'll see some good old stairs. I just feel the urge to break some boxes. If we follow these stairs, we'll come up to this item that you can see from below in the pot area. It's three smithing stone twos. Just from picking things up, we've gotten enough smithing stones, most likely. Yeah, we could check, actually. Yes, we have enough smithing stone twos to upgrade this rapier to plus six if we so desire. But I might wait until we get a different rapier to do something like that. See, over this way is nothing. Then off to the right is a Trina's a lily. Once you grab that item over there, turn around and start following this wall. We have a new shield that we're going to goal toward. I get the feeling we don't have enough endurance to even carry the thing yet, but we still want a better shield. Never hurts to have more. Over here, there are going to be some randos doing rando things. Weathered straight sword. Meh. So our goal is to just kill all the little plebeian dudes in here. Sorry, commoner, not plebeian. Same thing, really. One charged heavy with a rapier seems to be enough to just murk them. Well, maybe only if they don't notice you, because you get the sneak damage. But it doesn't really matter too much if they hit you, and they don't hit very hard. <laughs> Surprisingly, the standard attack does less poise damage. This does less poise damage than the shield up version. Very weird. Hey, did you just... 
Did you just throw something at me? Did you? You did, didn't you? How dare? Here, I got one of those too. But mine explodes. Let's craft that back. I do believe this? Yes, the Manor Tower Shield. It's gonna choke some Estus, just in case I might get smacked in the back of the head at some point. But I do believe... Oh, 30 strength. Yikes. Well, we're probably going to go toward this shield. It's going to be the in-between shield. There's one more we're going to be upgrading to after this one, which is called the Visage Shield. Has a nice pretty face on it. And then the final one requires, I think, 42 strength or something. So we'll have to work toward that. Now, as it stands, we don't have enough endurance or strength to equip that. If we get nine levels into strength, we can equip the Manor Shield. Or if we just get an accessory that gives us strength, that would be good too. But that's what we're going to go toward. We might get to 40 vigor beforehand though. Let's go ahead and grab this Smithing Stone 3. Neat. Coming through this doorway, we're gonna hug this wall and stick to it. Then come down onto these rocks. Just keep walking down, sticking to the wall. Like glue. Until you come down to this area. What's this? Give me the fake. What are you? Golden Rune 5. Neat. Then, let's into this door. I don't remember a lot of this. It's been over a year since, <laughs> since I played this thing. We have rainbow stones, which are fairly irrelevant. Down there is where the Batmen were. Wait, what is that? Oh, I might have to get that. We'll unlock this door first. This is the Liftside Chamber Grace from the beginning of the episode. We now have a shortcut to all this crap that we won't really be using. But we have it. Better to have it not need it than blah blah blah, you get the idea. We'll come down here onto this roof, jump across to this other roof, then jump across this way, and I guess figure out what's in here. It looks like it could be a stone sword key. Oh, bat. That's what's in here. Come on. Stop. Just stop with the up. Come down. There you go. Like all the way to the ground. What's this? Arterial leaf. Well, that was basically a waste of time. Let's go ahead and go back to the secluded cell grace. We more or less have everything that we need from this area, so the final step is to murderate this boss. We will. So first things first, Flask of Wondrous Physic. Take a step in and get ready. Oh yeah, I forgot that he had a cutscene. That's a lot of fingies. Well. Ooh. Seems like a handyman. Alright, the jokes are over. Go ahead and kill this guy. I guess we'll summon the wolf, I guess. Actually, no, nah, we'll test barricade shield. <laughs> Maybe we can stagger him. Let's try barricade shield. No, but I think it reduced the stamina cost. Yeah, it is. It's definitely reducing the stamina cost. Now, this guy is pretty easy to handle. Most of it really is like block one attack and stab at the same time he does. But when he comes in for a lot of these bigger combos, you want to back up. Because he actually doesn't have as much reach as you would think. Okay, Barricade Shield does reduce stamina damage a bit. When he does that tornado, you can usually block one or two of the parts, but you do want to back up afterward, because he will bust your stamina. But for the most part, you can handle this entire phase with the Sword and Board style. Just making sure not to overdo it, because he has no grabs. See, one, two, and then you roll back with the tornado. If he jumps in the air like this, you can walk toward and to the right, and he'll completely whiff. <laughs> this entire combo string? Yeah, okay, I just tested it. I stood still with my shield up. You can block it. What about the ground pound? You can block that too. <laughs> Dude, shields are so good in this game. Okay, he's about to do some interesting things with his hand. I didn't want this anyway. Yeah, bud. You thought one too many hands is what you had? If you just reduced the amount of hands you had, you would just stand a better chance? Dude's going into labor. Alright, I don't like waiting for cutscenes. He puts the dragon's head on his hand and somehow it comes back to life. Like so. So, let's, uh, we're, we're gonna start this, skip the scene, we're gonna run straight at him. Because he's gonna breathe fire at us. So, <laughs> so here we go. Run straight at him, he'll breathe fire. And then he gets some free attacks in, because the arm is too long. And now, let's see if we can block all of this with Dragon Head. Oh, we can. Oh, but he's got a grab. You want to roll for that last part because that is a grab. Overhead, yeah, we can block that just fine. I should have stood closer for that part. That's a grab. So he might just do that randomly. Okay, here comes the tornado. Okay, we'll try to block this. That's a lot of stamina damage. He's breathing fire. You want to run behind him if he starts to do this. I know it can be a little difficult. I almost got grabbed again. It can be a little difficult to register, but it's not horrible. 
Oh, here comes the grab again. That really is the only threat here. You do have to roll the grab. Here comes the tornado. And then you can still walk forward and to the right to completely avoid that attack. The overhead slam, you can just trade blows with your shield up. Yeah, so there's only one part you actually have to practice. Can we block this? One, two, and three. <laughs> you can just block the whole thing. Trivialize an entire portion of the fight. Here comes another grab. It is pretty slow, so you have a surprising amount of time to stop attacking and register what's happening. Here he comes with the tornado, walk forward and right. And a grab again. Very doable. Here comes the ground pound. Now you can jump this last part and get lots of time to just stab him to death. Which I would actually recommend, because jumping isn't too bad. There's a lot of time in between, or not in between, there's a lot of time during the jump where you're just invulnerable to that attack. Look, he's almost dead. Oh no, he's gonna breathe fire. This is the only other option when he breathes fire is to just run super far away. Like, super far. You know what, we'll just summon some dogs and let them kill him. You gotta feed your puppies. It's chow time. <laughs> Eat yourself a god. Yeah. That's, that's the way we feed our doggos. Good puppy. Good widow puppy. It's gonna just pop a seat. It's probably one of the easiest to uh, quote quote big bad bosses. Godric's great rune. Remembrance of the grafted and 20k souls. More excited about the souls than everything else. And of course we touch grass. Restore our humanity. I suppose we'll rest at it. Use these souls right off the bat. Runes. Whatever. If you've never played Dark Souls, I apologize if you're getting confused by me saying souls instead of runes or Estus instead of flask or crimson tears, because that's just how it registers in my brain. Strength. We can only get three levels right now. We need nine. So that means the next six levels will go into strength, and then we're going to need a boatload into endurance. Hmm. That's fine. For now, we'll put the three points into strength, try to get the next six levels into that as well. Leaves us with 3,000 souls. Runes. Soul runes. Rolls. What's up, creepy tall stinky dude? Blah 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 blah. Exposition. Exposition. What's in the store? Fisty cuffs. Raid arrow. Ballista bolts. Buckler. I'm buying that. I gotta do it. Gotta have at least one. Everything else can be ignored. Yeah. Oh, minor correction. Some time ago, we got a gold pickled foul foot, and I said we'll never use that. I was wrong. I'm thinking of the silver pickled foul foot. We'll use the gold one for sure. So, once you open that door, you get a nice little throne. You can jump on it if you want. If you're feeling, uh, edgy, very edgy, you can pop a seat. Be like, ooh, I killed the weakest of the gods, and now I'm the man. To the right is a door. We're gonna ignore that door because it's empty. We go to the left. We just keep running through these rooms, down some stairs. Then in here, suddenly the tone shifts to warmer colors. We run off to the left here, grab this man's grapes, like some kind of crazy grape-grabbing pervert, and then exit the building. Exit stage left. Entering Lyurnia of the Lakes. I don't know why it's not appearing. On oh, there it is. <laughs> Le Lyurnia of the Lakes. Now we're going to touch some grass. Hmm. Grass flavor. Hop on our doggo, and then pay a visit to the church. Grab these shrooms on the outside. Sacred tear. Neat. Talk to this guy. Blah, blah. Exposition. Exposition. Yeah, sure. Ten runes. Imagine being worried about ten runes. Oh, he's got sorceries and stuff. I don't care. Actually, when did I talk to that guy? Not a mage. There's a little crumple over here in the church on the side. We're gonna run out here, and there's a graveyard in that direction. We're gonna go there. There's a scroll in that graveyard we're gonna grab. For ye who playeth the mage. We're gonna want to grab these. These scrolls will give you access, the academy scroll, will give you access to better and more spells. What's this? One of those skulls? Yeah. Well, maybe more. It's kind of hard to get better than the generic first spell when you pick sorcerer. It's honestly buff. It's a great spell. Just the standard pew pew. Stake of America here, so if you die, you can undie yourself in this area. I suppose we could clear this camp. There isn't too much reason to, but there's not much reason not to. Ugh. Okay, now there's a reason not to. I stab this guy to death. Stop throwing things at me. Rude. Actually, I don't even need the shield up. I can stagger him with generic attacks. What's up, dudes? Coming to help your buddy? What'd you drop? Short sword. Ugh. The most generic of swords. 
I guess just shield up, stab all these guys to death. There doesn't seem to be any complicated knights. I thought that there was one, like, actual knight here. Not just, like, soldiers. You can just aggressively stab this guy to death. If you look at my stamina bar, you can go to town with a rapier and it takes virtually nothing. Lintstone Craftsman's Cookbook. You can run through these areas, by the way, on the horse, and just grab everything, mashing the pickup button, if you so desire. Like this, you just run into here, hit the pickup button run out, double jump whenever you need to, or you can pick a fight with them. It's entirely up to you what you decide to do. You really can just endlessly attack with rapiers, damn. The downside really is just the range. But we're gonna go through the other end of the campsite, hop on our dog, horse, thing, goat, run down to this site of grace to the left of this lake, touch grass, and this is the site of grace that you want to use to farm fire pots. Now, there might be better places, so if you want to go on YouTube and look for those, that's fine too. But I like to touch this, come over to this merchant man, grab the smoldering butterflies, come over here, grab the one mushroom, turn to the left, oh, I got two in each, and then just touch grass. Oh wait, hold on, I can upgrade my flasks? Oh yeah, we went to a church. We have imbued the faith within ourselves. But yes, every time you touch this, you can come over here, Grab one smoldering butterfly and one mushroom over and over, so it's one fire pot per rest. It's not amazing. I'm sure there's a better way, but this is just simple enough for me. I usually grab enough for about a hundred. I know that's a lot. And then I never come back here for another playthrough, because I'll use them for maybe about an hour of gameplay and then forget that fire pots exist, because I'll be doing better with crossbows or really normal bows. That's what I tend to use. But that's usually how it goes. Maybe because I'm doing episodic content and I'm stepping away every hour, basically playing once a day, I'll actually remember. Or I'll forget instantly. One of the two. But let's take a peek at what the merchant has in store for us. I can't not grab the stuff mm, stuff all right merchant what do you have i didn't save many souls for this guy whoopsie another lantern this is the other merchant that holds a lantern i think there might be a third one somewhere too but no promises now if for whatever reason you picked something that wasn't mage and you wanted to be a mage this is the guy who will give you a staff to be a mage he also has the estoc which is just a slightly better rapier and we are probably going to buy it also this, what does this give? Crystal darts, which are really good. Spellproof dried liver. Shatter shard arrow. I guess we'll take it. The kite shield. This is actually pretty good, all things considered. The weight is low. The guard boost is two points higher than the heater shield. It's really not bad. Arrows and bolts are expensive though. So we're going to sell enough of the golden runes to equate to about 2,000 runes. Yeah, we'll just sell all the golden rune ones and buy the stock. Also, now that we've slain Godric, we're going to want to pay a visit to the Table of Lost Grace, a little Home Depot of Elden Ring. You need things? Go here. Get things. Mmm, those are thing-flavored. Now, if we come through here to this, like, middle portion with the... Yes, yes. This area with the balcony, you can see things and stuff, which we could go down there if we wanted to. We're not, because we don't need to. But to the right is a man named Rogier, and he's gonna exposition our little ears off. And you just hit yes, 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 all the things for sure. Good chat, blah, blah, blah. About the corpse under Stormvale. Talk, 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 blah, blah, blah. Or I've defeated Godric. You tell him this, and he gives you a rapier. A pretty good one, too. That's what we really wanted. Now, he sells ashes of war. Some of them are pretty neat, I guess. It's the best way to put it. Lindstone Pebble. Think the standard sorcerer spell, but like a third the range, doesn't track, and does terrible damage. That's what the Glintstone Pebble is. The Carrion Greatsword is a big slow attack. By the time you're done doing this and charging it up, you're better off just doing a heavy attack with something. You could have gone into your menu and switched to a two-handed sword. I just power attacked. Spinning weapon. It's a meme attack. For meme people. We've talked to Rogier for the first time and the last time. We'll never see him again. Oh, this chick is here. All right, after defeating Godric or... No, and after entering... This portion of the map, the Lyurnia of the Lakes, this chick comes to the table hold, or table of lost grace, or whatever this is. But you're going to want to let her exposition one or two times, and then run to the blacksmith. And he will also exposition, exposition. Hold on, he's got an option here about Roderica. That's the chick. I'm learning things. Look at me, knowing story and stuff. Blah, 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 about the chains. I guess we'll get rid of these two. Just take all of his options that aren't these four basic ones. Let him just speak your little ears off. Now we go back to Rodrigo. Exposition, exposition. 
Tell her what the blacksmith said. Exposition, exposition. Oh, man, does it ever stop? Now we go back to, <laughs> back to the blacksmith. Oh, man. This is a one-time thing. About Rodriga. Would you watch over Rodriga? Blah, 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 blah. It's what she wants. Blah, 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 blah. Exposition. Okay. Now, if we open our map and fast travel to the Table of Lost Grace. It just resets the area. Then we run over near where the blacksmith is. In that room... Here we are. There's the blacksmith having a mighty prayer, because I just murdered a god, I think. Then to the left is Rodrika, with uh, carpet, books, and stuff. She's just looking at her hands like, what have I done? If we talk to her, blah, 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 man, they talk too much. Spirit tuning. You can use grave glove warts and ghost glove warts to enhance your spirit ashes, your friends, your summonable allies for the people who want to fight a boss, but not by themselves. Now this will give the creatures higher HP, defense, and damage. It is a pretty palpable upgrade with each one, and you're going to have to get through certain phases of the map to unlock higher tier Grave Glove Wards. So this first area, Limb Grave, you can get, I think, up to Grave Glove Wart 3. So you can upgrade your Wolf Ashes three times before even fighting Margit. Marjorie, Margarine, Morgo, Robbie. So that's pretty cool. We probably won't be messing with it for the most part. I usually just mono e mono my bosses. Now, we've done everything that we need to do there. Actually, no, we'll, we'll pay a quick visit to Master Huggy, the blacksmith, actually. Travel right back. I love that Elden Ring's loading screens are actually nice and quick, considering how big the game is. Seven days could certainly learn something. Gonna chat to this guy, blah, 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 exposition. I guess we'll ask him about it just in case it blocks any future crap that he has to say. All right, now that he's done chatting, we'll see if we can upgrade Rogier's Rapier. If you hit R1, right bumper, or whatever your controller says, we'll come over here. Okay, we don't have enough Smithing Stone 3s to finish up this upgrade, but we're going to swap right over. We might still end up using the S-Talk. I'm not sure. We'll see. We're going to equip Rogier's Rapier because it is just straight up superior to anything else that we have. I think we're getting a 30 damage boost. I'll take a peek in a moment. For now, go into the Ashes of War and un equip the actually glint blade phalanx is a pretty good ash of war maybe we should keep that so what that does actually i'll just show it i don't have to talk about it i can just show let's go to the leonia of the lakes the great lake shore if i equip just the wrap here so glint blade phalanx if i cast this ash of war i get four floating swords and if I, actually, let me go find an enemy. If I get near an enemy, they will just home in on him the second he's in front of me. So this guy, if I just walk close to him, they will hone in and ba ba bow Now, they don't do very much damage. The spell version does lots of damage. But the Ash of War one mostly just does poise damage. And I think it scales a little bit with your intelligence, so if you're a mage, it might be better. But, for the most part, I don't think we're going to use this. I was wrong. It's not that great. We're going to replace that with... The bloody slash. And of course, make it bleeding type. So, with bleed, which reduces base damage, the Rangier's Rapier is almost identical to the Rapier plus three. It's actually got more scaling, so it's better. So it was a good idea to switch to Rangier's Rapier. It also has a pretty neat heavy attack. So you like hold it up into your face, and then like a fencer, you go in and wap wap, double hit. And then the second part is also two hits. Pretty neat. I think I'm going to spend the next few minutes farming for the fire pots, which, of course, I'm not going to make you sit through that, so we're going to go ahead and have ourselves a bit of a time lapse. I'll see you when that is done. That was quite a bit of running in circles, but collectively a worthwhile investment. It was about 10 minutes of running that little cycle of collecting the butterflies and the mushrooms and they have enough to craft 82 fire pots that's probably going to be enough to last the rest of the playthrough so we can essentially consider this to be an infinite resource at this point maybe don't use it to rest at a bonfire and kill things over and over but using it for individual instances like going through a new area seeing something not wanting to dump 50 crossbow bolts into it and instead you know hit it with a boom boom then you can worthwhile investment indeed but this has been Episode 7, the Elden Ring series. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye.